Now, all these flow variables that we've been looking at before, they're going to tell us, um, dictate the forces on the object, okay? My handwriting's getting better than me. They're gonna dictate the forces on the object. So that's good to know. But then we have a question of like, well, what in the world are they? So what are these variables? Well, let me give you a, go ahead and draw a picture here and then we'll go from there. So right here, these are what are called streamlines. It's simply the direction and the path that the air molecules are taking as they go through the flow. And we're gonna give them little arrows to show that we're going that direction all along the way. Looks good there, going good so far. Perfect. And if I were then to pick a particular point in the flow, like right here, from the little box, I could zoom in and what I would see then is a bunch of molecules, oxygen, nitrogen, there'd be some water in there, and all kinds of other things floating around. And so different flow variables are coming from different parts of this flow. Some from the macroscopic, some most from the microscopic. So the first one we're going to talk about is simply velocity. That'll be number one. Number one, what in the world? There we go. Number one is going to be velocity. Okay. And we t usually use lowercase u, v, and w. That is for the x, y, and z directions of velocity. What are the units? Units typically meters per second in this course. I will every once in a while throw miles per hour at you, but not all that often. And velocity is probably the easiest one to understand because you deal with it all the time. We have some streamline here. We have just a box of fluid, more or less, box of air molecules, and that is moving along the streamline. How fast it moves along that streamline is its velocity. So let's give our technical definition here. This is how fast. and infinitely small, I should say infinitesimally small, fluid element passes through an observation window. So you are looking at some particular point, how fast is the air flowing through that? Okay. Now this one is not a molecular quantity because it's not based on the types of molecules, it's simply based on how fast they are all moving together. And this one helps us because we had that continue. We have a continuum assumption where we're simply saying that um, I'm going to write that down first. This satisfies the continuum assumption. That's simply meaning that. Air is a block, it's not made up of lots of dots, even though it is, with lots of gaps in between.
Instead, it is continuous. And that's how we treat velocity. Because we're not really looking at the individual particles, we're looking at oh, the overall flow. Okay, the second one we'll talk about is pressure. usually shown with an uppercase P and it's got units of Newton per meter squared or Pascal. Now if I were to draw this, well, it's like I have, let's just say I have a little wall. I have some wall inside of my flow. I just put it in there, it's very, very small. And I want to have little fluid molecules on both sides. I'll just go ahead and draw them. There we go. Beautiful little fluid molecules. Now those fluid molecules, they have velocity. And so they are moving around. And sometimes those fluid molecules, they bounce off the walls. And pressure is simply the result of that. There is a force on the surface because I am bouncing off the wall. The pressure is the force on the so the force on a surface from fluid molecules bashing into it. And because we might have a pressure difference, in this case I had one molecule on one side and two molecules on the other, that will lead to a pressure difference and therefore a net force. Okay, looking good there. Well, I'll stop here for the moment. We'll continue next time with density.